a street in Ballybock on the north side of Dublin city. On one side, a row of small dwellings with a kitchen and one room and a scullery. Mr. and Mrs. Bowles were getting ready to leave for their new house in Coolock on the day we were there, and they were delighted. Mr. George Curtis, whose house had also been condemned, had as yet no alternative accommodation offered to him. Most of the people who live here would like to get away to somewhere that they could be proud of and that could be kept clean and tidy. Most of Dublin, especially its Georgian parts, went up altogether in the 18th century. And now it's coming down again altogether. Once the proud townhouses and residences of the wealthy, the decorated ceilings are now falling down. The spacious halls are open to the icy winds and the passing dogs. Many of the landlords of these kind of houses claim that the tenants in them have themselves deliberately damaged the houses in order to get them condemned and then moved out to new houses in new corporation estates. The rents are low, 11 to 15 shillings, but this doesn't compensate for the drawbacks. <laughs> right, can you? That's right, yeah, that's right. right. Uh, Mrs. Griffin, you're moving out of this house today. You had a flat here and you're moving out to yes. a new house. Yes, sir. Well, tell us about this house you were in. How long were you here? I'm only three years here. That's all, you know, like. And uh, we had to go down to the yard for water, drag it up, like, you know. And uh, the house was very good condition when I moved in. I mean, it wasn't bad, you know. But we were brought to court the 27th of December. And we were told that we only got 10 to 14 days to get out. So. I got a note like last Monday saying go down for your kids if you're going to Fingless and my husband went down for the case. So I'm going to Fingless tonight. Yeah. When did you think when you got the court order to move out, did you think you were going to, uh, did you know where you were going to go? I didn't know from Adam where I was going to go, but still all I put down on Fingless where I'd like to go. Were you asked? Oh, we were asked, yes. We were asked where would we like to go. I said I'd like to go to Fingless. Hmm. Well, we've had the court order, but I've got no place yet. Uh, my husband and his son away. I must keep a home for him. But the other people in the house has all got their houses. I've had the court order and I've been informed by the corporation that um, they have no places for two and I would not have a chance of getting a place. You're just your husband and yourself? And myself, yes. So Miss Murphy, uh, you're living here in uh, 40, what is it, 48? 48, 48, sir. No, 48 York Street. York Street? Yes, sir. Um, how long have you been here? I'm 22 years here, sir. Mm -hmm. And um, are you, uh, have you to move out? We have to, we've already got a, a key for 70, 74 Galtry Moor Drive. A one bedroom and a kitchen for my husband, my boy 20 and myself. And if we don't take it, we're to go to uh, Griffith Barracks. My husband is to go to uh, Benburg Street lodging house, and my boy is to look for lodgings for himself. If we don't, if we don't take this place, we've been offered. What's wrong with Galtie Moore Drive? Well, it's too small. I mean, and then my husband has to be in work at a quarter to seven in the morning, and he must get the quarter past six bus and keep a road to entitle him to get into work again a quarter to seven. Mrs. Felton, you're living next door here in yeah, 48. 47. 47? 47, yeah. yeah. Well, what kind of a house is it? Well, it's, uh, it was when I came to it, it seemed to be a very good house. Uh, nothing, but now we're getting evacuated. I don't know for what, of course, all the people are out of us. Yeah. Out of us. And we're to be evacuated on Monday, according to the police. Next Monday? Next Monday. They're giving us on Monday. We were to be up today, but we're going out, we're to be evacuated on Monday. Have, have you had any offer of other accommodation? No, the social welfare came and asked if we take a caravan like in Donnybrook and I said yes, but we've got no further offers. This only yourself? Only myself. I had three deaths in 61. 
And you live around here all your life? All my life. I was born in, born in Angel Street and raised 67 years around the fort that here. Married and all out of the Yorkshire. You wouldn't mind going out to Donnybrook to live in the caravan? No, oh, but in the Dunroop, because I've been here, I believe they're very nice up there, not too far out, you know. I've been near the Irish Sister Church where they call into me, give me that blessing, man, I wouldn't be, and I'd be bad. <laughs> Mrs. Mulligan, how long have you been living here in this house? 47 years. Ah. Do you want to move out? No. Well, who's, who's, who wants to move you out? Have the corporation asked you to get out of the house? Yes, it's condemned. Do you know why it's condemned? No. Well, did they tell you, did they give you any reason why you have to move out of the house? No. No, they didn't. What will you do if um, you have to go out? They'll have to get me somewhere to go to. Mm. They didn't say where? No. Yeah. Is the house dangerous at all, Mrs Mulligan? I don't think so. I don't think so. Mm. And you don't know when they're asking you to move out? No, I didn't get any definite answer. The Dublin Health Authority do their best to make Griffith Barracks habitable. But it's not suitable accommodation for whole families. Barbed wire along the walls keep out unwanted intruders and the wives I say like father, their husbands. But at least it's better than this mixture of scrap heap and broken down housing. Hello. Um, you two ladies are living in here in Griffith Barracks. Yes, yes, that's right. And this is uh, your Mrs. Mrs. Wall. And this is your husband. Yeah. Yes. And Mrs. Mrs. Broderick. Broderick. Yeah. Just is this your child. this is your child yes. here in the corner? I was staying with my mother and I was born, and I had to get out because I didn't consider her with eleven children. I said, my husband was staying in one bedroom. I had the other bedroom to myself, and she said she wasn't getting no help. So I had to come into Griffith Barracks. And my husband's in the army, Clancy Barracks. He stays in there. And it's costing me you now 70 and 6 from last Monday, and it cost me 7 and 6 in a cafe every day for me meals. And I replied to the corporation for a house, and they sent back a letter telling me that they were considering the case for the area. And when the condemned dairies fell, they'd forgotten all about me if they'd done nothing since. And I think this place is really like a prison in here, because we have to ring the bell when, we go in, when we're going in, and we have to tell the man when we're coming out. And we're only allowed to see our husbands up to 10 o'clock at night. And uh, from now on, we were told that our husbands is going to be stopped by 10 o'clock here. And I have a baby in St. Dolphin's Hospital. So she has bronchitis and septic acid in the throat. And I can't have him back unless I get a home of my own. Well, I was sub 10 in a corporation house, you see. And my husband and myself and a child. And we were asked to leave at the corporation as the landlady was being evicted for not paying rent. So th I went down to the corporation and sent him here to Griffith Barracks. I'm in Griffith Barracks on the 26th of November. My child was sent into the hospital for the simple reason that there was no fire to keep my child warm. My husband is working very late every night and he cannot see me, maybe only once in a week. I w my child will not left back out Griff my child will not be left back out St. Alton's Hospital for the simple reason is that there's no fire and the conditions in Griffith Barracks is terrible. Mr. Wall, while your wife and uh, children are in here in Griffith Barracks, where are you living? Uh, with my mother. Mm. And uh, what, do you ever get in here? Are you working late? I'd be, uh, I'd be working late at night, and uh, I, sometimes I can't see my wife at night. I'd be working late, and I uh, can't even see the kids in the uh, hospital, because I'd be working late. Yeah, well, this, you're working after 10 o'clock, so that uh, you're finished after the time you're allowed in here. Yes. So you can't get in. Can't get in. I've had a you know, place I could be able to go home and uh, live in peace now. Just beside the double locked gate is a gap in the barbed wire. I was told that this is how the husbands succeed in beating the curfew. Mr. Quinn, how did you get um, where you are now in a tent on the pavement? Well, I was, I was put in here by a TD. I came to see a TD due to circumstances unfortunately and then um, conditions in here were very bad 
I decided there's only one thing for them is to come out on the streets. Well, where's this? This is the conditions bad in Griffith Barracks. In Griffith Barracks, yes, right. that's right. And then we decided to pitch a tent down here and protest really against no homes. Mm. I've been on that waiting list four years. And that time I've seen about everybody in this city that could possibly help, and still I got nothing. Where were you and your family living before you moved into Griffith Barracks? I was living with a mother now. And uh, all the circumstances there, it's just impossible like, to work out, you know? Well, we came home from England a year ago. I did at least with the three children, and my husband followed me a couple of months after that because he heard there was work here. And anyway, he came home, he was only a couple of days home in Dublin when he did get a job, nice enough, and good wages, that we could afford a house and get plenty of furniture, whatever we needed. So I was living with my mother and there was 19 of us in the house, which is only a two-bedroomed house, and she had to put me out one Sunday morning as it was really too full there, you know. Well, I went around to a tea day on Sundrive Road and he sent me down to Griffith Barracks. Well, I thought the house, the corporation, I should say, would have housed me then, but they didn't. They just sent me into Griffith Barracks. And while I was in there, I had about 16 months, and he was sent into um, Klonsky Hospital. Anyway, he was in six weeks, and he came home then, and they still weren't going to do anything for me. And in the week that I was left over there, my young girl got chicken pox out of it on a Wednesday, so I decided to move out on a Friday night. So I went over living in the tent to see would the corporation do anything, but so far they haven't even come near us. I've got a young boy now in St. Kevin's and I've got a young girl in Klonsky with the chicken pox, which I don't think to be able to come out until we have a home to bring them to. So I just have to leave them there. Demand for new houses built by the corporation is satisfied in projects like McKinley Road in Finglas. The houses here are like the ones in the model we've just seen. No sooner are the decorators out of a house than the people are in, sometimes even before the electricity is laid on. It's an indication of the feverish activity of the housing section of the corporation. The gardens have yet to be laid down but the complaints are few. Temporary disadvantages don't put in on the people, and most of them who've moved out love their new houses. Mrs. Griffin, how, this, you've just had your first night in, um, out here in Finglas in your new house. How do you like it? I like it very much. Like, you know, I only got here last night, you know. Yeah. But we have no light, like, you know, no gas. But I like it very much, like, you know. How are you cooking at the moment? Oh, we're cooking on the fire, like, you know. And um, everything is okay. And you really like it? Oh, I like it very much, yes. Yeah. Margaret, how do you like living out here in Finglas? I think it's very nice because um, we have hot water. We don't have to be dragging water up and down the stairs. And I can get a bus just down the road and to walk, easy enough. Yeah. Does it cost you more to get to work? Oh yes, I used to go on the bike before, but I have to take the bus now. Mm. And it'll be, it'll be about 10 shillings a week for bus fare in and out, you know. But if I can get a job near, I'm going to try that one. Mr Griffin, how do you like your new house? I like it very much indeed. Uh, the place we were living in, the ceiling was falling, and we had to be dragging up uh, water up the stairs. And also, the toilet facilities were very, very bad indeed. So this place is a big This trade. place is definitely a, a palace uh, compared to it, and I'm very thankful to the corporation for supplying me with such a nice house. Mr Griffin, what about rent? You're paying more for here than you I'm did paying, in Dorset Street. I'm paying more for rent here, but I don't mind that because I have every comfort that anyone could ask for. And what about your work? Uh, well, my walk, I'll have to cycle in, which I'm stationed in my key barracks at the moment, and I'll just have to cycle across the back floor. There's only a few miles in the difference. What's your name? Thomas Mills. Thomas. And yours? Karen Mills. You're his sister. You're, you're, yeah, go on. Uh, where were you before you came out here? Uh, I lived in Summer Hill Parade. Yeah, that was in, in around Parnell Street? Yes. Now, do you like being out here? Yes, it's great. What's nice about it? 
Oh, there's plenty of fields to play in and all. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And there's plenty of birds' nests. Yeah. There's no birds' nest now at this hour of the year. The middle of winter. Yeah, there's oh, old birds' nests. Nest. Yeah. Ah, and you don't you like that too? Yeah. Good. What about you? Do you like being out here? I like out here? here very much. Yeah, you still going to school inside in Summer Hill in, in no. Summer Hill Parade? I got into St. Cancer's down in the village. And how do you like that? I'm starting tomorrow. Yeah, you're st you don't know yet. Well, uh, are you looking forward to it? I am. Very yeah, much. good. Mr. Shelley, you are living in this house in Dorset Street as well. How long are you out here now, Fingus? A week exactly on Tuesday. Yeah. And I like it very much. The only thing we're without now is the gas. But we got a loan of electric, uh, electric uh, ring. And it's coming. No, it's all right now, you know, for a few days. Yeah. You have light? Oh, yes. The light was on the day we moved in. Yeah. And what, uh, What's the nicest thing you like about this place, Mr. Shelley? The nicest thing is for the children. Because I made to leave the baby out in the pram, and Patrick is there to run up and down in the passage. And I can see the change in them already. They're sleeping better. The two of them have slept all night, every night now since we come out. And Patrick doesn't seem to be so cross because he's able to get out in the air, and he wasn't able to do that in Dorset Street because I was too high up for to let him out. I'd been running up and down the stairs all the time, and that's best thing that happened yet to me to be over here. Um, Mr Shelley, what about your work? Is it harder for you to get into work from here? Well, it's, it's harder, but it's not too bad, like, you know. Yeah. They've got the terminus here. I'm always sure I get in the bus, like, you know. Yeah. It takes about 25 minutes to get in. Yeah. And uh, I hop on the number one or two yeah. at Alcorn Bridge and it takes me down. But you're happy to get out here? Yes. Well, I'm used to travelling far. I used to live in Valley family, you know, the mother up near Cherry Orchard. So uh, I'm well used to it. Yeah. What about rent, Mr. Shelley? It's much dearer. How much dearer yeah. than it was for the place in Dorset Street? Yeah, well, uh, it was 12 and 6 in Dorset Street. It's 23 shillings here. It's a pound, uh, one pound six in the difference. Big difference? Oh, well, there's a big difference, but we don't mind it, you know. It's just a job. I mean, pound isn't that much.